Go Six Pack and I drank 4,256 beers in 2019. Today, we give you our favorites. Mad Elf in a Can. Good idea or bad idea? We'll find out. From the Moss Mill Brewing Company in Huntington Valley, Bucks County, he's Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack. Now, this is What's Brewing. What's Brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. Download the app. By Visit Bucks County. Follow the Bucks County Ale Trail. Go to visitbuckscounty.com slash ale trail to get your passport. And by the Conshohocken Brewing Company. Now with five locations. Welcome to What's Brewing. He's Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack. Now we are at the Moss Mill Brewing Company in beautiful Huntington Valley, Bucks County. Part of the Bucks County Ale Trail. We spent a lot of time in Bucks County this season. It's been great. Yeah, a lot of fun. You get your, uh, your, your what do you get? Uh, Passport. Passport yes. punched here. Thank you, Joe Sixpack. What are you drinking? This is uh, Moss Mill's De Birds. And oh, it's, yeah. Yeah, we actually think we had this on the we did. show once before. This uh, sales of this beer support the Eagles Autism Foundation. Terrific stuff. All right, so it's the start of a new year. We hope that everybody had great holidays. And one of the things we wanted to start with is our favorite beers from last year. You want to go first? Uh, sure, why not? Uh, you know, it's end of the year, good time to sort of assess what, all that beer we've been enjoying. And this one. A lot of gallons, up, man. It really, this one showed up at the end of the year from 2SP. Pale Smoke, it's called a great name. It's a smoky beer. You know how much I like those. I it's do. A and I know, I mean, he's doing great stuff over at 2S. They really are. In we, and out, and, you know. We had stuff their, with Wawa is uh, exactly, great. last week. So, uh, and this is a smoky beer. It's not necessarily made for everybody, people who don't like smoke. I get the smoke. It's sort of an entry level yeah. smoked how lager. Do, how does he put the smoke in? How it's do you do that? The malt. It's smoked over a fire, which is the way they used to make beer. Uh, this is modeled on a beer from Bamberg, Germany, which was uh, made by Schlenkerle. It's a Hellas style beer. You know what? It's good. You're going to like it a lot more than I'm going to like it. We each have our favorites. I respect it more than I love it. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Very enjoyable. I'm going to give you my three, two, one. Okay. All right. Really did it. And out. number three, and I, and listen, I'm part of Conchak and Brewing Company. You know that. I don't really talk about our stuff. Well, I guess I do, but I try to kind of soft pedal it, but. This is the beer I have more than I have any other beer during the year. This is our Puddler's Row. To me, it's just a great everyday beer. It's different kind of beer, an English malt style beer, which is different, and we make it, and I like it. ESB, it's a wonderful style beer, uh, and it's a good go-to beer, absolutely. Coming in at number two for me this year, we spent uh, time at our friends at Ship Bottom. I love their Mexican stout with chocolate and cinnamon and peppers. This thing, this is a fiesta in a can right yeah, here. I can't, we, we've talked about it a number of times. I really encourage uh, viewers to go get this beer because it's something special. It really All is. Right. My favorite beer of the year, Lord Hobo Brewing Company <laughs> up in Massachusetts. This is their Angelica. It's called the Hazy Orange IPA, but it's really kind of a IPA wheat beer, if that makes any sense. What they, what they do with this thing, I'm going to read you right off of what they say. Um, it offers the refreshing drinkability of a wheat beer combined with fruit juice characteristics and elegant haze. Uh, you get, you get a, a tropical fruit yeah. kind of sense. 5.5 ABV. To me, it's, I know it's more of a summer beer than I was just going to say beer. that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but to me, it's, it's like a Belgian-style wit 
marries a hazy IPA, yeah, and I love it's it. It's a great description, Glenn, actually, and uh, very refreshing. Uh, and this is my last can. <laughs> I think you got to schedule another trip I up do. to New England. I do. Well, we asked uh, our viewers to uh, tell us their favorite beers of the year, and we got a number of great selections. And actually, uh, I wanted to give a shout out right away to the top one that somebody mentioned, which was Odd Logic. Just opened up their brewery up in Bristol, and it, it, I, I, when I heard that it was open, I said, I got to go drive up there and check it out. And this is their uh, right in the fields coffee stout. Can't really see the label too well. Yeah, there. I mean, listen, this may be a great beer. Not for me to tell them how to run their business. That's a, it's a tough, I'm not gonna see this at the store. I think that uh, it's being mainly sold out of the brewery. Uh, they sold out of it on draft on the first weekend that they were Oh, open. all right, so they got something going some there. Making some nice stuff there. All right, here's some others that some of our uh, viewers told us that they liked. Uh, Brew Six Packs, uh, oh, th this is the, uh, that's that one, excuse me. Right. Rick Tobias, Treehouse Brighter Than Starlight, the Treehouse Brewing Company. I know, is, is you, iconic, uh, right? you brought back uh, cans yeah. of that for me in the past. Uh, some really nice stuff there. I'm not familiar with that beer. Uh, nicely, nicely, Martin said, Trogues Field Study IPA, and I enjoy that. We've I, had, I've had, had that some before. That. Yeah. that was, I believe, made with some of the uh, malt, uh, local malt, so that's a nice thing. Uh, John Hamilton said, Boniface. I can't read this, Padia American Pale Ale? Not had that. We've had St. Boniface on the show before, but not that one. Um, uh, let's see. Patrick Smith said, Yards, Make the World Better IPA. That was the one they did with Connor Barwin. Right. right. Uh, he's a great guy. It's, it's a good event. I didn't try it. Did you try it? Good I stuff? I haven't had it yet, okay. no. Um, let's see. Tom Cote said, Natter Days, the natural. That's natural Light Strawberry Lemonade. How'd that get through? <laughs> You know what? I know a lot of beer geeks that actually like that beer a lot. I haven't tasted it yet. We so. had a, we had a few people who mentioned that Yingling's Hershey collaboration. Yeah, we well, tried it. I, we did. We I didn't love it, but it was fun. It, but uh, we did manage to track it down. It tastes like basically a, a chocolate ice cream bar. Right. Hidden River, the evening oatmeal stout. Uh, Stickman General Merriment came up. Brewery R's Life Defined. Um, and Industrial Arts Wrench New England IPA. What do you know about that Well, one? I went out and got it, and I will tell you that this beer has been recommended to me to many times. I want to pour some for us. Glenn, let me ask you what you think of it. Uh, this is a New England style IPA. Oh, that's, I like it already. It's your style. I've been told that any number of times, you know, I'm going to pour you the one without all the foam. There you Sorry. go. Uh, to get this beer. And I want, you, I want you to tell me what you think of it. Pineapple juice. Pineapple juice and not really a big beer taste at all. I think that this is the maybe the New England IPA to the extreme. A beer that's by a beer only by name. It doesn't really taste like a beer to me. Yeah, it's it's carbonated pineapple juice. Pineapple juice. Not my favorite, but hey, we appreciated everybody's input. That was great stuff. Thank you so much. We love when you become part of the show. Uh, you can follow him at Beer Radar. You can follow me at Real Glenn Mac. Now, the show is uh, What's Brewing at What's Brewing PA, and we always love your feedback. Coming up, they named a beer in honor of Mr. Rogers. Good idea, bad idea. I'm not sure. It seems sacrilegious. We're at the Moss Mill Brewing Company in Bucks County. It's What's Brewing. It's a place that inspires the dreamers, the overachievers, a place for those who follow the path, as well as the ones who blaze them. So whether you want to go with the flow or rise above it all, visit Bucks County and be inspired. Welcome back to What's Brewing with Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack. Now we are at the Moss Mill Brewing Company, which I only once called the Meek Mill Brewing <laughs> Company so far, yeah. Huntington Valley. Uh, Bucks County, and you, we do this once in a while. Good idea, bad idea, and you came up with a few for the day for us to debate. Yeah, uh, and I like the, uh, the first one here is drinking in a grocery store. Is it a good idea to drink when you're going shopping? Not when you're walking down the aisles with the shopping cart. Is that where we're going here? Well, I could, except that, you know, what's happened in grocery stores is this, many of them have opened up bars yeah. within the grocery stores. It's part of like the whole shtick about being able to sell beer to go. Yeah, a, I'm all in. You you're okay with that? There's a Whole Foods near my house, right, right on Wynwood Avenue, and they got a great 
beer selection and the you know ferns and all that stuff you sit at the bar well i mentioned a little it. snack and beer what, i mentioned it because there's this be new opposed. place up in northern liberties called the heirloom uh market in northern liberties where they have an underground tap room with 40 taps that's a pretty substantial thing completely in on. with that you're cool with that i'm not only cool with that i it's imperative okay well i'm good with that at that level but i've been in some of these places and i will name acme uh -huh. and weiss markets as two of them that it, i can't even think of anything more depressing than sitting there and drinking well you gotta beer set it off listen the whole foods is pretty Pretty nice posh, place. Yeah, we've seen and that. I got wood paneling and all that stuff. Yeah, but some of them it's just an excuse. Right. It's really barely an excuse I to sell the beer. I don't need an excuse to drink beer. All right, well, what's number two? Okay, Mr. Rogers beer. It's actually not really Mr. Rogers beer. It's this new one from uh, Evil Genius. Our uh, folks up in Northern Liberties. Won't you be my neighbor? It's a hazy pale ale. What do you think of that, Glenn? First of all, I like that brewery. Yes. Second of all, I like a hazy pale ale. Right. I don't think you take Mr. Rogers' legacy and tie it to a beer. I think it's inappropriate. It's a kid's show. Right. I, I'm no. I, I'm on the fence on this one because I agree with you about the kids aspect, but the people who are what drinking did Mr. The, McFeely say? <laughs> I don't want to know. But, the, you know, the, the people who watched it are probably their prime uh, demographic, yeah. people who grew up watching it. Yeah. So it gives them the warm feelings and all the good fuzzy feelings about it. Oh, look at the can here. He's yeah. even wearing the sweater. Right. Although, they, I don't know. They don't show his face. No, right? but they show the little train and stuff. Yeah. I don't, is he getting, they, was like part of this going? to something I don't know I don't I'm, I'm not in I like evil genius I'm out on that one all right yeah. next all right so this is uh, something that's cropped up this year actually last year Trogues came out with their mad elf in a can really a Christmas beer it's supposed it's to be elf on the shelf it's the elf in the can <laughs> it's only available in a really really good 12 pack so viewers if you see this 12 pack it's outstanding uh, but my question is, is it appropriate to put in a strong, big Belgian celebratory holiday beer in a can? Well, to me, it all boils down to one thing. Flavor. Yeah, is it going to be as good? Okay. I, we, you and I have talked about this beer a lot. It's the iconic Christmas beer. Uh, I think it's terrific. And the question is, is it going to be the same in the can as in the bottle? Exactly. So Cans have gotten a lot better over the years. We know that. So we haven't do done this before. Test. That's what I should do. We haven't I'm not done this before, so the, uh, we're going to put the can in the left okay. and the bottle in right. the right. This is good work by you here. Thanks. All right. So I'm looking at them. They look exactly the same. I see no discernible yeah, difference. Neither do I. Okay. So the right uh, one is you, the bottle. Let's do, do first? that one first because we're first. more familiar. We like the bottle. We know it. Oh, that says Christmas to me. Really good. Very That's intense nice beer. beer. Yeah. Mmm. Should have brought more than one. Okay, so that's the bottle. Now, hold on. <laughs> Clear my palate. This is the can. I think it's the same. I think they pulled it off. I you agree. taste the difference? I agree. We've done this before. We did it with, I think, Victory Prima Pills. Right, right. And we sensed a difference. Right, when they went from uh, a new recipe. Yeah. This is the same beer, I guess, and I don't really just, just see any difference. The only difference is that it's in a can, and I don't think... I that's think we fine. Can, I think we can get over the fact yeah. that it's not in a I can. I think that's fine. fine. All right, real quickly, one more item we want to bring up, a brewery collaboration with eSports which I fear is the future. I fear that people on my radio station, WIP, 20 years from now are going to be discussing eSports more than the Eagles. Absolutely. I think it's yeah, so. I listen, you know, I'm old school, but yeah. tell me about the collaboration. All right, so Levante Brewing out in Westchester, mm -hmm. uh, they have collaborated with the eSports brand Team Secret to produce a beer, a beer called AFK, which I had to... Uh, Google stands for away from keyboard, and uh, they're making this they beer. They never are. They're making this beer uh, as part of a, a sponsorship, I guess, with this with this group. We're going to see a lot more of this. Anheuser Busch has uh, uh, has jumped in on this, and they're trying to call themselves the official beer sponsor of uh, esports or something yeah. like that. Good idea, so. bad idea, good idea for them. Yeah. 
I'm out, but you know, I'm not the audience they're looking for. Right, they're right. looking for people 21 to 35, right? And they will get them on that, so congratulations. All right, coming up, our producer, Jill Baker, went to Langhorn Brewing, found all kinds of interesting stories. You'll hear her report, and we'll get to taste new beer. Coming right. up next, from the Moss Mill Brewing Company in Bucks County, Joe Sixpack, Len Mack. Now, it's What's Brewing. I'm Joe Sixpack. I love beer and I love travel. I've visited great breweries around the world and I'm inviting you to join me on my next expedition to France. Yes, they make beer in France. We'll travel the Seine on a luxury river cruise from Paris to Normandy. We'll visit breweries, explore the sites, drink great beer and maybe some wine. Join me in October 2020. Just visit my website at phillybeerworld.com. Let's discover a world of beer together. I'm here at Langhorn Brewing Company with Frank Loyacono, and you'd think we might be talking about pizza, but we're actually going to be talking about beer. So, cheers. Cheers. So, you actually have been, you actually are a brewing pub, a brew pub. Brew pub. But you had a, a liquor license. Can you talk about that kind of transformation? Yeah, so um, I've always wanted to own a brew pub. So uh, last year I was looking through the, le the legal books and I found out how easy it became to become a brew pub. So I literally one night decided I'm going to sell my liquor license and uh, January 2nd of 2019 we became a brew pub. Wow, that's, that's massive. Um, I'm a chef, trained chef, and um, what I did was I went out and hired brewers and with that, I, um, I basically, they give me, I give them an idea of what, what I want done. They give me a recipe. I look at the recipe, we cook it, and I might tweak it and say, hey, you know, maybe we could get a little more flavor out by adding a little more of this or roasting off that. Um, some example was uh, our lemon shanty last summer. I decided that we need to put a whole other case of lemons in there and, and uh, a lot of zest, so, <laughs> so on and so forth. That's awesome. But, so you've been actually behind the bar since you were 24. Yes. But you started with liquor and that kind of stuff. Right. Um, what kind of differences do you see between brewing and craft beers versus what you did when you were 24? Well, I've been saying for years that this is an evolution that's been happening, that um, the old school bar of the Budweiser Coors Light, it's dying, it's dying off, it's dying down. I've been predicting it for years. And um, I believe the newer customer wants to come out and they want to taste uh, more hops, they want to taste more flavor. They don't want to power drink 10 beers anymore. They'd rather go out, I mean, it's just the way of the world. They want, they want to drink two beers and they want to get a lot of flavor and um, enjoy it. You're known for your pizzas, known as beautiful pizzas. as they are. What do people most come out for? Which pizza and which beer? Definitely the Trenton pie, mm -hmm. my most popular pie. Thin crust, mozzarella, a little bit of plum tomatoes. <laughs> you are a chef. <laughs> <laughs> um, and our most popular beer, Cheers, is our wheat, which is our, our it's called Dave. Oh, uh, why? Story. Story behind that is um, my friend Dave said that nobody would ever want a brew pub in Langhorn and he would only drink Miller Lite. My other friend Dave only drank Coronas and when I brewed our beers, they both gravitated toward this beer, so we called it Dave. I like that, I like yeah. <laughs> a little personal touch. It's our, it's our own little personal inside joke. So now you are a brew, uh, brew pub in Langhorn. Yeah. Do you have a lot of people coming in here looking for tastings and things like that or? All day long. Um, they, they're, looking to they're looking to taste new seasonal stuff. They're looking to taste fruits. Um, stouts, browns, uh, literally anything we put out seems to, you know, at least they're gonna come out and try it. And, they, and they're more than happy to give us their opinion on it too. <laughs> Does that kind of influence the different ideas that you have? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You know, when you have three people in front of you saying, I, you know, I want a New England IPA, then you gotta go and find a way to make a New England IPA for them. Do you have any ideas on your radar? Um, in our, on our radar, we have, in my personal radar, in the winter time, I actually wanna do a pineapple beer, because oh. despite what brewers will tell you, pineapple is not a summer fruit it's a winter fruit so um, okay. so I think that's gonna be that's one I'm gonna be trying to influence in the next couple months that's awesome Thank so you. people coming in right now what do you suggest they're gonna buy a thin crust pizza this beautiful bubbling cheese here uh, yes and uh, pair it with a Dave what's another recommendation you might um, have sip vicious or IPA if you're in the IPAs I think our sip vicious is one of the best IPAs out there um, it's kind of um, not too bitter mm -hmm. like some people think uh, some some IPAs are a little too hoppy that one's got more fruit flavors so it's very nice um, other things that I would recommend as I'm looking at my board right now would be the raspberry wheat if you're into some fruits. Um, and if you look at something darker, I always like my brown ale. Pers that's my personal. That's your personal. <laughs> my personal. Everybody's awesome. a little different. With Langhorn Brewing Company, what 
what are your aspirations moving forward with it? In 2020, we're going to start um, distributing Dave and we're going to start uh, distributing Sip Vicious. We've uh, got to the level now that we're going to be able to do that. So hopefully you'll be seeing it in a bar near you. Mm -hmm. Not going on. <laughs> <laughs> Not you say it. <laughs> 2020 aspirations. There yes. you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, guys, I am going to enjoy some of this pizza, some of this cheesy pizza. Come on. Oof. And you can go ahead and try some of this beer. Well, Jill did not bring us back any of that pizza, but she did bring us back some beer from the uh, Langhorn Brewing Company, which, by the way, like here, Moss Mill is part of the Bucks County Ale Trail. What do we got here? It's cool. It's called Dave. It's a wheat beer that they brewed up there. Uh, okay. Give it a shot. It. Well, that's nice. Nice, refreshing. Uh, yeah, nice, congrats. Nice. I can't wait to see what else you're going to make Good up there. Stuff. Nice report, Jill. All right, let's get to our brew down. We're down, to, we're going from we started 32, we're going 16 into eight here, right? right? Second exactly. round. So we did, uh, uh, we had the pills category that we had, it was a big, you know, really tight race to me. Mm -hmm. Pills, of course, is Philadelphia's sort of trademark yep. mark beer style. And we had a matchup between Stouts, which was sort of like the original uh, local pills, and then the Chamonix Creek Trowger, uh, and the Chamonix oh, Creek good. came out ahead. On that really? Yes. They beat Stouts? That's exactly. an upset to me. Very close. All right. Was an upset. Uh, next yeah. one I'm staying out of. Okay, yes. This was in the flavored beer category, and we had uh, two other really fantastic beers, Spellbound Coconut Palo Santo Porter. Good stuff. Outstanding beer. I can't talk about it enough. Up against uh, hometown favorite Concha Hawk and Blood Money, uh, the IPA that uh, is really just a fantastic beer. And Conchi took that one actually pretty substantially, too. Thank so. you very much. People love that Blood Money. They really do. All right, coming up, we are going to talk to somebody much smarter than us. Let's be honest. She is a PhD in chemistry from Penn. When, uh, when did you get yours in that? Uh, I'm still working on it. <laughs> Evan, Evan Rogers, who can explain to us how all this works. Um, from the Moss Mill Brewing Company in Bucks County, Joe Sixpack, Len Mack now, it's What's Brewing. Hi, it's Glenn Mack now. You've seen some of our Conchock and Brewing Company spots on this show, so I'd like to invite you to come and check them out. You can find us in Conchahawken, Bridgeport, Phoenixville, King of Prussia, and here in Havertown, where I'm enjoying an award-winning Puddler's Row right now. It's one of our year-round core beers, along with Type A IPA and user-friendly Blonde Ale. We've also got exciting seasonal beers, like Blood Money IPA, Philly Vice, and our Unfiltered IPA series. And come hungry. From burgers and wings to salads and small bites, there's something for everyone. Don't leave without trying the amazing cheese curds. All of our spots are built for year-round fun, so you can enjoy a cold one in every season. And good news, you can find Conchahawken beer at grocery stores, distributors, and restaurants throughout PA, South Jersey, and Delaware. So get yourself to Conchahawken Brewing Company. I'll meet you at the bar. Well, welcome back to What's Brewing. In case you haven't noticed, I've gotten a lot smarter <laughs> since the last uh, commercial. Anyway, with uh, Joe Sixpack, I'm Glenn Mack. Now, joined by Evan Rogers, co-owner here of Moss Mill Brewing Company. She's got a PhD in immunology, so much smarter than us to begin <laughs> with. What are we looking at here? So what we're doing here is a beer skunking test. So most of what you... Beer skunking. Beer skunking, yes. All right. So there's no skunks in there. No skunks in here. <laughs> this is something you can actually do at home too. We're simulating it today in the lab uh -huh. under UV light, but you can go ahead and take beer outside about two minutes outside tops and you're going to get the same effect. And you do this because why? We're trying to teach people about quality. So okay. it's part of what we're doing with the Bucks County Community College. Uh, we're doing a whole brewing sciences program with them. This will be one of the things that they learn how to do, and it's something fun that you can do at home, too. Which is so fun. should we try? Is, this, yeah. is it going to be skunky? So now it should be skunky. This has been oh, in Oh, great. Joe Sixpack, this one's on you. <laughs> Thanks Five minutes, and it's something super simple. You can just go ahead and smell. Okay. So we'll go ahead and give this a little twirl. Crack it open. Just smell, no drink. You can smell it. I mean, you could drink it if you really want to. Oh, there's but definitely an off... There's an uh, off aroma. smell yeah, about it, right? Absolutely. It gets stale, it yeah, gets yeah. cardboardy. Reminds me of Heineken. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and so you can smell here, this is the fresh one, the one that hasn't been skunked. Yeah, absolutely. It's a and huge it's difference. Totally a huge difference. Yeah. So here, smell okay. the first one. All right. All right. This so is that's the original. Here, yeah. That's good. I would drink this. Mm -hmm. 
Ooh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And so that's just a couple minutes. So that's kind of why we, when we, we sell beer, we sell it in a can. We sell it protected from the light. We either do dark bottles. Um, and why when you take the beer out in cups, while it looks really pretty, sure, it doesn't always hold up to quality wise. So sunlight affects beer. When you put beer out in glass, uh, Correct. it will be damaged. The light, what, it affects the hops, right? It does. It, so it changes all of those um, alpha acids and everything within the beer itself. Right. So uh, one of the reasons why we often see beer in uh, brown bottles or more likely cans these days prevent, protect against uh, the light damage. Yeah. So cans are really great for that because there's no light that penetrates through the cans. So glass, you'll still get some. But the cans you get none. The trouble with the cans is then the DO, which we'll talk to Dick about later. Okay, so this is a pretty cool thing, though, that you've got this piece of machinery here. We're in a really small brewery here, Glenn. This is not the kind of equipment you would normally see in a brewery this size. What's going on here? Why has uh, Moss Mill committed so much to the whole technology, the science behind this beer? Yeah, so at Moss Mill, we're really centered on quality of the beer. So first and foremost, we want a beer that's going to taste good, it's going to taste great every time you drink it, and is really consistent. The only way to do that is with a full-scale lab. So, so we have a lab here that's equivalent to what uh, some of the bigger guys in the area have, like a Yards or somebody like them. Right. I'm completely impressed by all the great technology here. There's a couple contraptions here that I've never seen before. This is really pushing it, it technology-wise. I mean, we're talking state-of-the-art here, right? Correct. Yeah. I mean, we have automated cell counters. We have what you see here is a, a fume hood with lets us plate things under sterile conditions, um, and we have everything to be able to test everything from yeast quality to then their viability to then the actual beer itself. And it sounds like you're willing to share this technology a little bit. We are, very much so. So we're opening up the program come January 1st. Um, we're testing not only our beer, but we're going to open it up to all the other breweries in the area and home brewers as well. That's spectacular. Very nice. That's great. Now, is this what you got into? I mean, you're, you are a scientist? Is this I'm a scientist by training, but it's not really where I started. Where, 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 where did I you thought start? I would be. <laughs> what did you think you'd be doing? Oh, goodness. I have the scientific background, but I mainly specialize in marketing. Honestly. Okay. Oh. Good. So I do all of the marketing here, and then I'm stepping back to my roots now to then come back and play in the lab. So are you more a fan of the beer or the science of the beer? The science of the beer. Okay. I love how you can take a living, breathing organism and make so many different things with it. My wife says that about me. What's, um, <laughs> what's, what's, what's your favorite style of beer? I like Belgian beers best. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's what I you're mean, drinking there, Glenn. Right? The Belgian I got, triple, I got the triple right here. Is my favorite beer we make. Mm -hmm. That's actually sort of a kind of crazy beer, too, because the yeast really does unusual things to it. Is that something that you can track in a laboratory like yeah. this? Yeah. So with this lab, we're able to track yeast uh, by generation, see how they're doing see what kind of um, off flavors they could be giving. We can actually separate individual yeast strains and look for um, specific yeasts that are actually going to give us the flavor profiles we want to. Evan Rogers, thank you so much for showing us. Thank you so much for having us here today at Moss Mill Brewing Company. I may be wearing this home. Go for Look it. good in that. I, I think my IQ's picked up 20 points. <laughs> Makes up for all the beer. Uh, again, thanks to our friends at Moss Mill, Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack. Now, we'll see you next week on What's Brewing. What's Brewing is brought to you in part by Montgo Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. Download the app by Visit Bucks County. Follow the Bucks County Ale Trail. Go to visitbuckscounty.com slash ale trail to get your passport. And by the Conshohocken Brewing Company, now with five locations.